Rishi Sunak is pushing forward the smoking ban. And I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what the strategy is. Perhaps they understand, because we live under a dictatorship, essentially, because we have this uni party where democracy is an illusion and, you know, we have conservatives and labor and they pretend they're different, but they're not really. So maybe the plan is because they seem to be really trying to get Tories out. That seems to be the goal. Because what it is, is we've had them for about 15 years. People are starting to get fed up. They're blaming all the problem. Oh, it's Rishi Sunak, it's the Tories, it's the Tories. So what they do is they go, well, look, guys, since they're being so awful and they're deliberately being worse and worse and worse and having the smoking ban and this ban and this ban, they're like, look, Labour are better. They're better than this. So then every, every 15 years, they just keep switching and switching. They keep just destroying each other until humanity is enslaved. So maybe that's the plan. But I'm not entirely sure. Whatever the plan is with this smoking ban, all I know is that it's not for our health. We know they don't care about our health. Let's just remember, COVID happened. Let's just not forget everything that happened during then. They clearly don't care about our health. Our, our health. So whatever it is, it's not about that. Which is one of the things that's annoying me. Is everybody says, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You really think they're going to ban ban everything, control you, restrict everything you want to do. And, and yes, I do believe it. Because here's, here's just a thought. Have you ever seen the government like remove a law? No, no, you haven't. You've never seen the government remove a law. They've only ever added laws. So they're adding the smoking ban, and they're going to keep. They're not going to remove that smoking ban in the future. They're going to keep adding another law, and then another law, and another law, and another law. It's slow. It's incremental. You cannot jump from banning nothing to then, let's say, the end goal is banning meat and dairy. We see C forty cities by Sadiq Khan wanting to ban meat and dairy by twenty thirty. You cannot just jump from no bans to always on banning meat and dairy. You have to. This is, here's the principle, because it's not just a smoking ban, it's under a certain principle. The principle is, health is a state issue. They're saying that we have the power to say something's bad for you, in this case, smoking, and sure it is, but they're going to say, whatever we deem bad for you and unnecessary and unhealthy, we're going to ban it. And it's getting used to that, so that when they want to ban the next thing, whatever that will be, no meat Saturdays, Whatever, whatever the next thing's gonna be, we're then more likely to accept it because they're not gonna go. For, they're not just gonna go ban meat and dairy. By the way, they're gonna start off with like meat free Mondays or something. And the reason I believe it's this kind of thing is because smoking's like a class one carcinogen according to the FDA or whatever thing does it. Uh, red meat is a class two A, which is just the one below it. So they're gonna start banning these class one carcinogens. And they're going to go, this is a complete lie anyway. Meat doesn't cause cancer. I don't know who came up with that. The reason they're probably trying to do that is to make us more likely to accept it. Because they can attack meat at all angles. They can attack it from the selfish point of view. Not in a bad way, but as in like, you know, it harms you, it harms you. But then if you're maybe someone that doesn't mind about yourself too much, you kind of just eat what you want, don't really care. Well, then they come at you with the, it hurts the planet. It's, you know, for the future generations, then whatever you do care about, they're attacking that thing. So yeah, what they're trying to say essentially is if it's bad for you or the planet, we're going to ban it. See, that's a good rhyme. I don't like it though, because it's not a good thing. With the, and with the whole incremental, you know, incremental slet, incremental steps to tyranny, it's like, that's why they're only banning it for, I think it's like, if you're born after 2009, you can't smoke. And that just makes me spiteful. Because I'm always trying to disobey... And I don't like the government. I don't like what they're doing and everything they're pushing. And I happen to be born in 2009. So I could smoke once I turn 18. And because I'm just off the bracket, I'm kind of like spiteful. Like they're going to turn me into a smoker because of this. So I don't know. But yeah, the reason I'm not banning smoking altogether is because there's a large percent of the population that smoke. And they're not younger people. And this is the whole thing. People, people will sit there and go... You know, oh, well, it's not a big deal because, you know, the younger people aren't smoking much anyway. But that's not the point. It doesn't matter if younger people aren't smoking. You still can't ban something. Just because it hurts 1% of the population doesn't mean that... I mean, it might not even hurt them, but still. Just because it's banning something that only 1% of the population does, 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 doesn't mean that they have the right to ban it. Just because not many people will care. Remember what it is? Have you heard the, the phrase about, like, Nazi Germany? We can... Put this into the phrase, first they came for the smokers, and I did nothing. Then it's going to be like, next they came for the meat eaters, and next they came for the alcoholics. And it's, 
you know, you didn't speak out, but then you came for everybody, and then it's too late. So it starts off with smokers. And smokers born after 2009 might be a very, very small percentage of the population, but then they're going to ban something that's 2% of the population, then 5%, then 10%, then 20 then 30 then 40 And then they're going to just outright ban meat and dairy, which is the end, the, well, maybe not the end goal, but one of the very, very long-term goals they have that they really want to push and have been trying to push. One, one thing I was going to say is the government has no right saying what we can and cannot do with our own health. It's my body, my choice, the abortion argument. But... Do they? Because in Britain, we have state healthcare, the NHS is government taxpayer funded. And I'm really conflicted in this at the moment. Because if health, because health is then a state issue, if taxpayer money is paying for someone's chemotherapy when they go and get lung cancer from smoking, I mean, do they have the right to ban smoking? So that's almost changing my opinion on the whole public private healthcare which side would be on, you know, do you want to nationalize it as it currently is, or do you want to make it, do you want to privatize it? Because I'm almost wanting to privatize it at, at that point, because if the government can sit there and go, you know, all these people are flooding the NHS with their stupid little lung cancer, they keep coming in, and that's taxpayer money, pretending they care about taxpayer money, which they don't, but they'll pretend to care. They can essentially say, we're going we, we're to ban it. Because once health, once health, once your health is a state issue, they can ban whatever they deem as unhealthy. So I'm, I'm pretty conflicted in that at the moment. But what I'd say, if you want to oppose a smoking ban, I mean, I recommend that shop owners just all build online communities to just say we're going to sell it to whoever we want to sell it to. And because of the, if they all build up communities together, whoever they want to go, Facebook communities, I don't know, then they can all say, yep, we're, none of us are going to obey this law. We're going to sell it to who we want to sell. They can't arrest all shop owners. They just can't do it simply. And just, again, I, I say mass disobedience. I would just say, to put it simply, ignore the law. Just pretend it doesn't exist. And they can't do much about it. I would say this is the ULEZ of public health. You know, like, it starts off with ULEZ, then it goes to paper mile, then it goes to no driving Saturdays or Sundays. Germany's trying to push. I think it was Germany and, yeah. So this is like the ULEZ of health, you know, so it started with ULEZ and people are well, then banning cars, and then with this it goes no smoking, then no meat weekends, then no meat entirely. It's incremental steps towards tyranny. So that's why you have to oppose it now, because whilst right now it might be fine, you have to oppose it before it's then too late. So yeah, keep fighting and long live freedom.